What's up? My name is Mark and I'm a photographer slash videographer. And today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about panoramas. So a quick side note before I get into the panorama thing, I didn't make videos for a few weeks because I kind of ran out of things to talk about. And it's because I was trying to focus too specifically on business. And the problem with that is a lot of it is rinse and repeat and just getting on that grind. So I ran out of videos to talk about the things that I was doing because the things that I was doing was the same thing as last week and it just was not gonna be interesting. I am still doing it and I am still planning on, you know, reaching these goals that I set out for myself by 2021, by the time I'm 27. But I figured with this series, I will have those, but I'm predominantly gonna be focusing on more day-to-day -day things and actually making more of a lifestyle vlog as opposed to here are my specific goals, look at me try to achieve them and basically go over the same thing over and over and over again because that's boring. Let's start with today which is panoramas. I have basically whittled down my fine art collection to very specifically only providing panoramic prints and the reason why is because everyone needs a niche and that's a niche that I'm really passionate about. I love panoramas, I love creating them and I love printing them so I figured why not only do those, at least for the time being. I wanna talk about, about how I go about creating my panoramas and how I go about, basically why I go about doing them the way I do. So a panorama real quick is a picture that is a wide screen, specifically if it's a two to one or wider ratio. I often shoot mine so that they are 2.39 to one, which is the same as cinema widescreen. Uh, and I sometimes have a three to one just for that extra width. Now with a panorama, you can either take one photograph and then crop it down, or you can take many photographs and stitch them together. I choose to do the many photographs and stitch them together option. The big reason is because when you crop a photo, if you only have one image, say this is your frame, Oops. say this is your frame, right? And then you crop it down to here, all of that bit here and all of this bit here is gone. It's resolution that you're not making use of. And so your sensor, which only captures, say, my, in my instance, is 22 megapixels. It's only it's a very, very finite amount of information that it's capturing. So what I want to do is maximize the resolution I can. So instead of getting, you know, a 30 mil or a 35 mil or a 50 mil or a 24 mil or a wide, wide, ultra wide angle lens and then cropping off the top and bottom of the image, I grab a really long zoom lens. In my case, I use a 135 mil f2 and I basically break down the panorama into say 30 parts and then I will photograph each of them and then stitch all those photos together so that it creates what looks like a 35 mil shot, but it is in fact a bunch of 135 mil shots. The huge benefit here is obviously resolution. When, you know, I've got each photo coming out as about 22 megapixels and I'm combining 30 of them together, I'm gonna end up with an image that is huge. Perfect example of that is I've actually got a panorama that I took uh, and I've got two versions of it. There is one that I shot with a 35mm lens and then there's one that I've shot with I think it's about 20 photos that are stitched together in two rows. So I basically did a sweep across, down and then a sweep back and I've stitched all those together. The really frustrating thing is I didn't focus correctly with the multi-stitch image and so it's kind of soft. So I can't use it. But I also can't use the single image because it'll only print you know, A2 at the biggest, and that's just not big enough for what I offer. Uh, and the thing is, you can't even tell when it's on a screen because you just can't see the information that could be there. But when you print, it'd become more obvious. So while I would love to use that image, I can't, but I can use it in this instance to show you the difference in scale. So you've got this image, which is a single shot on a 35 mil lens cropped down. And then you've got this shot, which is like, I think almost two dozen images stitched together and not cropped at all it's pretty obvious how much difference there is in size and scale and you know that's awesome i'm so about that especially when the prints i offer are the smallest is a1 which is 36 inches across by technically it's 36 by 24 but usually it's 36 by 16 i want to say because that's the ratio that i crop to so i mean that's basically why I shoot panoramas the way I do. When you're out actually shooting them, you've got to be a little bit more careful about how you photograph them because it's not just one shot cropped. It's you've got to make sure every shot is consistent and the focus runs the whole way through. And that's the mistake I made with the previous shot. The depth of field wasn't deep enough. And so the mountains along the back of the image aren't in focus and the foreground isn't quite in focus either. But there is a patch right in the middle that is like pin sharp. Problem with it is that that's no good if I'm printing it the size of a wall. So something that I need to be careful of in the future, uh, and it's actually something that I'm planning on doing in the future, is recording and basically making like 
adventure landscape photography vlogs because I think that's quite interesting and I think it will translate well to something that people would want to see. So I'm hoping in future you'll be seeing a lot more of me wandering around the highlands. So I've already tried doing this uh, technically piece to camera once before, it's just talking at the camera, um, back at the start of the hike, but I didn't really go over what I wanted to achieve today. So essentially I am out here, I'm climbing Ben Vorlick today, and there is another Munro, but I forgot the name of it, I'll put the text here-ish. So I'm out here and the plan is to try and capture another couple of panoramas. Now last time I did this, I was over in Glencoe area, I hiked Bukaila to more and we had this really beautiful like spattered sunlight that was coming through. I'll show some of the images here. And it was this amazing combination of cloudy and direct light. So it was really dynamic, really awesome to look at. Loved it, it turned out perfectly. Today, extremely different. It's heavy fog and low lying cloud. Basically though, I can't shoot the same kind of images that I was before. So while I am here to do panoramas, the chances are I'm gonna be focusing more on negative space photos and photos that um, take advantage of the mist and the gloom. Okay, so I've made it to the top of Ben Vorlich and it is a whitewash all around me. I, you can't see anything. Um, which is a bit of a shame, but it is really peaceful, which I am very thankful for. There's not a single person out here. I got to just have lunch by myself and just really enjoy it. It is getting a lot colder, so I've rugged up again, but it's looking okay. Uh, I am going to carry on to the next Munro and then fingers crossed by the time I get there, some of the cloud will shift. I don't think it will, but you know, Today is always going to be very much like a rock up, see what I can see. If there's nothing, it's fine. If there is something, cool. Um, yeah, so I'm going to crack on. I'm probably not going to film much B-roll. The path onwards uh, is pretty full on, and I don't want to be distracted by filming to, to you know risk falling. So I'll put the camera away, and if I find something cool, I will bring it back out again. So I'm starting to think I might not get a photo today. Uh, which is fine, it's the nature of things, you know, you go out, try, and if you don't get anything, too bad. Oh, hang on, let's maybe widen that. Yeah, and you know, so I made it to the second, uh, to the second Munro top. I uh, had a brief view of the sky, and then the clouds rolled over immediately, so it's literally like, as you can see around me, complete whitewash the whole way around, which is not ideal. Uh, so I will be heading back, uh, just following the ridge down, um, again, I'm going to put the camera away just because it is pretty steep and it's very wet still because the clouds rolling through, everything's good and soaked. But on the whole, really good day, really enjoyed it so far. Been really nice just to get out and be by myself, completely by myself. I'm pretty sure I'm the only person on this tra trek today, on this hike today. I haven't seen a single other person, even coming out here, I barely saw anyone. It's been really peaceful, I've really enjoyed it, so hopefully I make it back. And if I can find a photo, cool, if not. It's not the end of the world, I'll just come back another time. Just got back to the car and I didn't film it, but on the way back I stopped a few times to take photos because I didn't see this place during the day because uh, I arrived here at like 7 in the morning and the sun wasn't up yet. But it's super pretty. So there's all these beautiful colours. There's this... There's this like perfect reflection off of the water at the lock, which is ideal. Just took a bunch of photos, we'll see if any of them work out. If they do, I'll talk about them from home while I'm editing them, and I'll make a little video including that bit. Okay, so I did manage to get some photos and they worked out really, really nicely. Um, as you can see here, I will show obviously a real version. You can see, worked out perfectly. I've got this beautiful uh, 21 by nine panorama that I think, let's actually have a look. I can check how many photos this is. That is seven photos, so it's not massive, but it is definitely big enough to uh, fit into my large-scale panorama print selection. What really stood out to me about this shot is that there was this one tree in the middle where the sun seemed to be 
like glowing on and also had the most leaves. So you've got this really bright, vibrant yellow tree right in the middle of the frame. And then everything else fades away. So you've got, you know, the color and the light and everything fades away from the middle. So you get this really natural vignette that really, really just focuses in on that tree. So that's why I captured it and it worked out so perfectly. I'm really, really happy with it. Basically come in as like one of the last autumn photos. Yeah, I'm just glad I got a chance to capture it because I didn't get to shoot much this autumn and I didn't want to miss out on getting some of those, you know, beautiful golden leaves and trees. So this is that photo. So the other photo that I got was actually facing back towards the mountain and this is actually a significantly larger image. This is... So this is actually 17 images stitched together and it's a two layer panorama. So I've done the strip across the top, down, and then the strip back. And that's all come together to create one big image. You get this beautiful set of colored trees that come along the bottom and then you've got the cloud with the, sorry, the mountain with the cloud coming across the top of it. And it really stood out to me because that was essentially where I'd just come from and coming out of the clouds. And I'm glad that you can actually see some of the ridge lines. So it works really nicely. There is also a, what I thought was an estate house that was like, maybe it was one that you could rent for weddings and things like that, but it is actually privately owned, which is pretty wild to me that someone has a house up there. It's so sick. But those are the two images that I got. I did try a few others, but they really didn't work. I know that the hike itself was a little bit disappointing uh, in that I didn't get any photos. However, it was really nice to just get out, get away and take a minute to just sort of try again, you know, and I do, hopefully plan on doing a lot more of those in the future and just hiking and taking the chance and seeing if I get a photo. If not, you know, that's not the end of the world. If I do, then it makes it all so much better. But that's all for this week and hopefully it's been nice and, you know, interesting. And next time I'll, uh, yeah, I'll focus on something else. But cheers. I need to get a better, better outro. I'll work on that.